Hello and welcome to Selfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I want to look at a couple of trig identities. This revision video is going to build on the last one I made on solving basic trig equations. So refer back to that one if you need to and make sure that you're feeling confident using either the cast diagrams or the trig graphs to solve equations. In this video I'm going to look at two trig identities and work through two exam problems on each, so that's four problems in total. As ever, please do grab a pen and paper. I do speed up the video in parts of my working, so it's up to you to pause the video and play to work through at your own pace and come back to compare. I hope this is helpful. Let's get started. So here I've written up the two identities that we're going to look at today in blue. First we've got sine squared plus cos squared is one, and it's really helpful to rearrange that to make sine squared or cos squared the subject. So I've done that in green underneath. And the second identity, tan, is sine divided by cos. Again, you can play around with that to make any of them the subject. These two identities you need to know off by heart. Um, it's not a huge amount to remember. And once you've practiced using them a few times, they should stick in your head. So let's take a look now at using these in exam style questions. Okay, so here we have the first exam style question. Um, it's asking us to solve in the range 0 to 360 degrees this equation here. The way I'm going to solve this is by using the second identity that's sine divided by cos is tan. You've only got two identities that you can use and there's nothing being squared here so it's clearly not the first identity. So what we're going to do is divide both sides by cos and this is a trick that you can remember um, and use again in other questions. So we're going to divide both sides by cos now. What that's done is turn this side into tan and got rid of the cos on the right hand side to leave us just with 5. Now we've got a simple straightforward trig equation that we can solve. Okay, so here I got the first solution by using the inverse function on the calculator and then I got the second solution using the cast diagram and identifying that it's 180 degrees plus the first acute angle to get 258. Um, you can do that using a tan graph as well. Second problem now, again we're going to use the second identity of tan being sine over cos. This one might, I don't know if it might be more straightforward or obvious, but because we've got tan already over here, so we can rewrite that as sine divided by cos. By timesing the cos up to the left hand side, we've now got rid of the fraction, which is always a good thing to do. Um, and another trick you can use to solve an equation that looks like this is noticing that the sine appears in both of the terms. So if we take this term over to that side, then we can factorise and solve that way. Do you know, I've just noticed that the exam question gave us theta and I've changed it to x. It's no harm done, but it's probably best to keep the variable they give you. I'll change back to theta now and try and remember. Okay, now we've got two different courses of solutions from either that being zero or this term being zero, and we can solve them separately. Okay, here I rearranged and got the first answer using the calculator and the second answer either by using cast diagram or the cos graph. So in total for this question we've got four different solutions. Okay, this full exam question actually was in two parts and the first part says something like show this here can be written in some such a form. I haven't written that up because I don't frankly have space on the whiteboard, but we're going to do that anyway in order to solve it. But just so you know, um, these kind of questions can, can often guide you in the direction that you need to solve it by telling you what form to get it into. This one's got a cos squared in it, so we're going to be using the first identity for this one. 
And the way to do that is by using um, the version of it where cos squared is the subject. So cos squared is 1 minus sine squared and we can substitute that directly in. Now we can expand out the brackets and rearrange. And this actually was the form that they wanted us to rearrange it into. And now we can solve that as a quadratic equation. Great, so for that question we've got three different solutions in the range they've given us. Well done if you got that right. Again, this problem has sine squares and cos squares, so it's obvious which identity we're going to use. Um, and really you could um, substitute in 1 minus cos squared to change them all into causes, or you could substitute this one as 1 minus sine squared to turn it all into sine, so it's really up to you which way you do it. I think I'm going to turn this into sine. Here could potentially trip a lot of people up um, if you don't remember that when you square root both sides of the equation, you'll get a positive and a negative result. So that's going to give us different solutions, which I'm going to solve separately. Fab, well done if you're starting to get those. Keep on practicing, plenty of questions. They can be quite tricky, these ones, because uh, a lot of different exam questions use them in different forms. I hope I've given you a flavour of how, how to use the identities in these problems that I've covered today. But do keep practising. I hope that was helpful. Have fun.